Good happy Saturday morning. I'm Riley King and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First step, car connected to incident at Pheasant Lane Mall found. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Cherise LeClaire. Tech runs on that. Why shouldn't your career? Nice Careers app puts your career path into perspective. Well, Shelly, tonight still a lot of questions remain. What we do know, just about a half an hour ago, police telling us that they did find the car. All of this stemming from an incident that happened earlier this evening at Pheasant Lane Mall. Police had been searching for this black 2006 Infiniti FX with Massachusetts plates. Earlier this evening, officers were seen at Pheasant Lane Mall with crime scene tape roping off a section of the parking garage near Macy's and Target. Now, authorities remained tight-lipped all evening as to why why they were searching for that vehicle, only saying they wanted to check on the well-being of the people inside. Right now, police are not telling us where they found that vehicle, who was inside, or the condition of anyone found inside that vehicle. We're live here in Nashua. I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. We will keep you updated as we get more details on this. Young heart transplant patient Ara Shiraz dies, family says. Let's take a listen to the video from W. Sorry about that. We do not have a video. Sorry. Ara Shiraz, the heart transplant patient and avid sports fan who has gone viral with several videos throughout his ordeal has died, his family said on Facebook. The heartbreaking news comes a little more than 24 hours after Chevrolet was rushed back into the emergency room and placed back on life support Thursday. His family was praying to release a new video con exciting Red Sox news when their plans were changed by the unexpected medical emergency. A few hours later, the family said Ara coded while in the emergency department and is back on life support after undergoing a half hour of CPR. He was being cared for in the cardiac intensive care unit at Boston Children's Hospital, the family said. Ara went home last month after spending 189 consecutive days in that hospital, awaiting for his new heart and then overcoming several hurdles in his recovery from surgery. In addition to Aral's medical setbacks, the family learned during his hospital stay that their house had to be torn down because of mold growing in the walls, floors, and ceilings. When he went home last month, it was to a rental property, but all he cared about was playing with his siblings. Aral loves sports, especially baseball. Many of the viral videos his family has produced featuring Aral swinging a baseball bat. Aral was signed as a horny Hornan player with the Assumption College team invited to attend a Red Sox game with Ice Bucket Challenge creator Peter Fates. In 
the video released by Aral's family on the same day, he was rushed to the hospital. Red Sox catcher Chris Jin Valquez, a short stopper, Alexander Bog dropped off gifts and invited Ara to throw out the first pitch at the Red Sox game on August 27th. And our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and his friends. The 52nd Annual Clam Festival underway in Yarmouth. Let's take a listen to this video from WMTW News 8, Kathleen Jordan. Yeah. A fine wife car is next. Tune up an oil change. Brain into Palmer Spring. Air conditioning. We can do that. Tire rotation. We do that. Exhaust. Absolutely. Give us a call or visit our website. We do it all. After weeks of sitting empty, chairs along Yarmouth's Main Street full Friday night. It's an awesome experience. The annual clam festival underway with one of the town's biggest parades yet. Come around the um, parade time, it's going to get very, very busy. 120 groups marching to this year's theme of classic movies. Thank you for supporting this ET. Vendors opening up their booths, each one working to support a different organization within their town. It's all families, Yarmouth community members, Yarmouth community programs, like the Lions Club is here. We have um, a singing group right next door, and of course the sports programs are all over. 30 groups of volunteers putting in thousands of hours to make this weekend all a reality. It's definitely grueling, definitely worthwhile. Those volunteers coming back each year as this festival gets bigger and better. Oh yeah, like years and years, probably 10. 52 years later, tight-knit community still celebrating the third weekend in July. People are enjoying the food and it's good. Kids get great experience with community service and working with the community and just it's awesome. Okay and there you go on that report. Looks like a fun festival to check out. I will need to try to check it out one day. Take a road trip and go to Maine and check it out. Trump Jr. Manufat agreed to corporate with Senate panel. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. I've been working as a philanthropic consultant for about three years now. There are several tools that have really helped me in starting and maintaining my business. QuickBooks, of course, being one of those. I use QuickBooks on a daily basis from my laptop to track expenses and look at revenue. But I also use it a lot on my cell phone when I'm traveling to capture receipts and even track my mileage. We have that new poll from ABC News and the Washington Post that points to star troubles for President Trump. His approval rating, just 36%, the lowest ever for a president at the six-month point. Digging beneath that finding, fewer than one in four Americans say the president's personal behavior is, quote, fitting and proper. 70% call it unpresidential. When asked to describe his tweeting habits, 68% of Americans call it inappropriate. More than half say the tweets are dangerous. One in five call them refreshing. And the president taking to Twitter to defend his son, Don Jr., as questions grow about that meeting with a Russian lawyer in Trump Tower during the campaign. Our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, is there in Washington, has the latest for us. Good morning, John. Good morning, Robin. After his trip to Paris and a weekend spent watching golf at his New Jersey resort, the president is back here at the White House, fending off new questions related to the Russia investigation. <laughs> The president appeared relaxed and in good spirits watching the U.S. Women's Golf Open over the weekend at his New Jersey club. But he is fuming about the investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 campaign. The president's lawyer making it clear who the president believes is leading what he calls a witch hunt. Is he saying that the Mueller investigation is part of a witch hunt? 
Yes, yeah, so look how it started, as it relates, especially as it relates to the president. The president is now also lashing out at those raising questions about his eldest son, Don Jr., and the June 2016 meeting between members of Trump's inner circle and a Russian lawyer that was held at Trump Tower, tweeting, My son Don is being scorned by the fake news media. Fake news is distorting democracy. But new details emerged even after Don Jr. himself released emails about the meeting. Do we now know everything about that meeting, who was there, and what follow-up there was? The meeting in and of itself, of course, as I've said before, is not a violation of the law. The president was not aware of the meeting and did not participate in it. We now know that not just one, but two well-connected Russians were in that meeting arranged with a promise of providing damaging information about Hillary Clinton. A Russian lawyer aligned with the Kremlin and a Russian-American lobbyist who was once an officer in a Soviet counterintelligence unit. This is about as clear evidence you could find of intent by the campaign to collude with the Russians. In a new ABC News poll, 63% of Americans think the meeting was inappropriate. The president has said that he would testify under oath about all of this. Would you be willing to speak under oath to uh, give your version of 100%. But his lawyer said he doesn't think the testimony will happen. The president you don't think said it will happen? He would do it. If, yeah, at this point, we have no indication at all whatsoever uh, of, of an investigation of the president with regard to any of this. I also asked the president's lawyer if the president would consider pardoning the key figures in this investigation, uh, people like former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, his former campaign chairman Paul Manafort. Many Democrats fear that he will do that. The president's lawyer said he hasn't talked to the president about that, but he certainly didn't rule it out, saying, quote, he can pardon individuals, of course. That's because the founders of our country put that in the Constitution, the power to pardon. Robin? We'll wait to see if that happens. So we're going to have to still wait on this health care vote because it's been put on hold again. It's been put on hold again because Senator John McCain uh, had surgery. It's expected that he'll take at least a week or maybe more to recover. Uh, Robin, I think it's quite possible this health care vote gets delayed until after the summer, sometime in September. That is quite possible. All right, John, thank you. Okay. and. There you go on that report and that video. And that did it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your Saturday, and I'll see you back here later on today. Bye, everyone.